بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful I testify that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is Allah's true slave and messenger may Allah Salah and Salam be upon the noble prophet his household and the noble companions and those who follow on their path until the day of resurrection uh, We continue, we continue the uh, discussion on the types of worship which the author Rahimahullah in his book The Three Fundamental Principles came across and uh, the, we spoke about the dua and also about the hope uh, having hope and uh, fear and love that these are worships or worship and that the one which we're going to talk about today is the tawakkul the tawakkul and this is it means trust and reliance trust and reliance And the evidence that he cited, rahimahullah, is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Talaq, in chapter 65, verse 3. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And place your reliance and trust in Allah if you are true believers. Uh, this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter 5, verse 23, and then 65, verse 3. And then he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ And whoever places his reliance and trust in Allah, then he will suffice him then he will suffice him. The origin of tawakkul is reliance or dependence. You say tawakkaltu ala Allahi meaning I depend upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and place reliance upon Allah this is the meaning of tawakkul this is the meaning of tawakkul and the reality of tawakkul is that the slave depends and relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly concerning his worldly affairs as well as concerning his deen. Together with the taking of or utilizing the permissible means, together with taking or utilizing the permissible means. So therefore, a tawakkul is i'tiqad is belief and i'timad dependence and as well as action wa'amal as to the conviction or the i'tiqad or the belief this is that this is it is as such meaning the slave knows that all affairs and all matters are under the authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala
nothing takes place except by his permission and by his will and by his leave whatever he wills will come to occur whatever wills will come to occur and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not will to occur or to take place will never be manifested and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most magnificent the most high is the one who brings benefits and the one who words harm and the one who gives and the one who holds all in accordance with his wisdom knowledge as well as justice then after that after the belief in this then the slave depends in his heart upon Allah the Most High and puts trust in Him firmly then after that brings the fourth matter and it is to take by the means the legal means which Allah permitted so now we see that three elements here al-atiqad, the conviction, the firm belief and al-atimad, dependence and reliance and thirdly is to take by the legal means And dependence upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of two types. Dependence upon Allah the Most High is of two types. Depending upon Him in attaining one's share from the provisions and the like. And the second is depending upon him in attaining his pleasure. Depending upon him in attaining his pleasure. Concerning the first one, Although the objective in itself is not worship, because this is man's share, however, depending upon Allah in attaining one's provision is worship, because this brings what is beneficial concerning his deen as well as his dunya, his, this life. The second type the objective in itself is worship, is ibadah. Depending upon Allah in that which pleases Him, in itself is ibadah. And the person firmly realizes in this case the meaning of إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ you alone do we worship and you alone we seek for help dependence in itself is from the completion of true faith of true iman and it is a sign of it and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ هذه سورة المائدة chapter 5 verse 23 and place your reliance and trust in Allah if you are true believers so 
พระชตรัสคำสอนที่วันหูอิสเฟรมลีสตาบลิชต์ในเฮสดีนที่อัลลอฮฺสุบฮานาอูตาลาจะดูแลปัญหาหรือปัญหาใดๆที่เขาจะมีทำไมนี่เป็นแสดงจากคำพูดของอัลลอฮฺที่มีพระเจ้าในสุราตุลตะลักในสุราสิบสี่บทที่สี่บทที่สี่และที่ผู้ตรัสถูกแสดงเป็นแสดงว่าไม่ยึดวัคลาอัลลอฮฺฟะฮุฮัสบุว่าไม่ยึดวัคลาอัลลอฮฺฟะฮุฮัสบุ and whosoever places his reliance and trust in Allah then Allah will suffice him We said that the dependence upon Allah is from the completion of the true faith. And it is one of the signs of one's sincerity in this deen. And therefore it's obligatory. Therefore it is obligatory. Because Iman faith cannot be completed without it. Iman faith cannot be completed without it. What are the types of dependence? That are not acceptable the first type depending upon other than Allah in that which only Allah is capable to do from bringing forth benefits or warding of harm and this type of dependence is major shirk is major shirk <coughs> Since because or because if the the true dependence is from the perfection of iman, then placing trust and reliance with other than Allah in that which only Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala can deliver is from the major shirk. And that's why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says in Surah Hud, in chapter 11, verse 123, "فعبده وتوكل عليه." فعبده وتوكل عليه. So worship him and put your trust in him. وقال الله تعالى and Allah the Most High said in سورة الأنفال in chapter eight verses two to four 
إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم The believers are only those who, when Allah is mentioned, feel a fear in their hearts. And when His verses in the Quran are recited unto them, they, the verses, increase their faith and they put their trust in their Lord, Allah alone. Those who perform as salah establish the prayers and spend out of what we have provided them. It is they who are the believers in truth. For them are grades of divinity with their Lord and forgiveness and a generous provision. The second type is to depend upon a living being like a king or a minister or person in authority. in that which Allah enabled him from having provisions or wording of harm while feeling that he himself is of a lower standing and the one upon whom he puts dependence upon is therefore higher in rank and standing this is a lesser shirk. This is a lesser shirk. Why? Because of the strong attachment of the heart with this man and depending upon him. However, if he believes that this man in authority and so forth is only a means and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who enabled him and provided on his hands from the provisions and the like then this is okay. If in fact this person can be effective in attaining what is sought. Many people however do not give this matter what it deserves and are negligent about it and they can reach the degree where they depend upon this man to attain their goals and therefore we should really pay attention to this because it is in fact widespread and we don't realize the grave impact of this on us so we should really give this our utmost attention in this life now due to these so many attachments people have that such relations may cover the heart in way which may 
blind it from seeing the lesser shirk involved. So I ask Allah, the Most High, to protect me and you from all of this. The third type. The third type is to depend upon someone by assigning him to do things on your behalf and rely upon him in that. While knowing he is able to carry such task. Meaning this is within his capacity. This is permissible. Proven by the Quran and by the Sunnah. And by the Islamic consensus. But he does not at depend upon him in attaining what he assigned him rather he depends upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making that possible and easy to attain whether he goes for it by himself or assigning someone else for that purpose so don't say I depend upon and put my place my reliance upon such and such you say, I assigned or I deputed such and such. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam assigned uh, some of his companions to, certain, to do certain tasks and to as a, as a form of deputation. Like, for example, he deputed the great companion Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, to be in charge of some of the sacrificing, sacrificing some of the Prophet's animals during Hajjat al-Wada' during the farewell pilgrimage and to give some of their parts uh, in charity and also he deputed Abu Huraira may Allah be pleased with him concerning the sadaqa collection of zakah and looking after the sadaqa and also deputed Urwa ibn al -Jad to buy for him a sacrificial animal so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us and commands us in Surah Al-Ma'idah by saying وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ this is a proof that this is mandatory obligatory and that it is from the worship because he said subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the verse if you are believers so this would mean if you are really true believers in Allah then put your trust and reliance upon him and when he Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ and whoever places his reliance and trust in Allah then Allah will suffice him meaning Allah is, will suffice him so his affairs will be taken care of and this in itself is a proof concerning the magnificence and greatness of this matter and its merits meaning at tawakkul putting trust and reliance upon Allah to the degree that in no type of worship 
there came something similar to this verse except in this worship of tawakkul meaning nothing of this type وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ and whoever places his reliance and trust in Allah then Allah will suffice him nothing concerning the other worships came like this verse except in this case here the case of tawakkul and from the merits of tawakkul is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the tawakkul a means to attain his love قال الله تعالى إن الله يحب المتوكلين in Surah Al-Imran in 3, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who put trust and reliance upon him and from the merits of tawakkul and from the merits of tawakkul and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who put their trust in him from the merits of tawakkul is that it stands as a proof for the correctness of one's Islam قال الله تعالى in Surah Yunus in chapter 10 verse 84 وقال موسى يا قوم إن كنتم آمنتم بالله فعليه توكلوا إن كنتم مسلمين And Musa said, O oh my people, if you have believed in Allah, then put your trust in Him if you are Muslims, those who submit to Allah as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who sincerely depend and put trust in Him. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.